Hello, I'm Susan Morgan Cooper and I'm here at Port Townsend International Film Festival with my film Mulberry Child and I'm actually the writer, producer and director and hair wrangler. <laughs> I was screening at the Palm Springs International Film Festival a few years ago with a movie I made about the famous photographer Eddie Adams who won a Pulitzer Prize for this picture, um, the Vietnamese shooting the Viet Cong point blank in the head. And that photograph was credited with helping end the Vietnam War. My film was screening at the Palm Springs Film Festival and this lovely British gentleman came along and he said, I love your work, will you make this book into a film? And the book was called Mulberry Child and it was actually the memoirs of Jean Ping's traumatic childhood during the Chinese Cultural Revolution. I read the book and I found the book was quite intriguing but I didn't want to make a distant history movie. I wanted to make a personal story. So it wasn't until I flew to Chicago to meet with Jean Ping and her American raised daughter Lisa and I found between them an emotional disconnect between the mother and the daughter. And I thought, ah, if I can trace that emotional disconnect back to Jeanne's traumatic childhood, now I have a movie. Actually, this was one of the fastest documentaries I've made because that was one of the conditions that the investor hired me. He wanted it to be made in a year and a half. So literally I worked day and night. And I had two challenges. One was that my subject spoke Chinglish sometimes, so she was hard to decipher. So I spent a lot of time in the editing room. And the other was that she had just a few very faded photographs of her childhood and her family. So I had to embark upon a reenactment and I didn't want to use actors, I wanted to use regular people. So I would, in Chinatown, I'd have my assistant drive through the town and I'd jump out of a moving car and chase little old ladies down the street looking for the grandmother in my movie. If I'd be in line at the grocery store, I'd say, are you Chinese? You have to be in my movie. And in Hollywood, I have a favorite Chinese restaurant. And I went to the owner, Tony, and I said, Tony, I need six red guards. So he opened the doors of the kitchen where all the workers were, and he said, Susan, choose. And that's how I got the actors for my reenactment. It was quite challenging because the grandmother was 80 years of age and quite fragile and she didn't speak a word of English. I made the decision when shooting in China that I would go in under the radar, so to speak. So I went uh, with a skeleton crew, just my cinematographer, who's an amazing Asian girl uh, called Quien Tran. The two subjects of my film are Asian and my cinematographer was Asian and it was just me. I was just the wicked blonde in the team. And we traveled extensively through China, down south to Shandu, to the Cultural Revolution Museum. And then we went up north, close to the Russian border, in a very remote area, to find a mud village, just like the one that the family had been banished to in the film. I filmed there extensively. I chose to scrape some mud off the wall of the village. I put it in a plastic bag. I put it in my suitcase and brought it back to America. 
And on my property in the Hollywood Hills, I worked with a workman with earth and lime and straw, and I constructed a mud hut so that I could do the reenactments with the people in America. So I film both in China, where the people are absolutely lovely, and in America. For me, authenticity is the key. You know, um, in finding the props, I did a lot of research with bowls and the kind of china that they, they would have at that period. I worked with a workman and we actually made the chairs and the table that were in the apartment that got ransacked by the Red Guards. Yes, I, I think details are hugely important because if a moment is not authentic, then the audience jumps out at the moment. What I love about documentaries is that you can always somehow change the life of someone out there in your audience because someone listening will get the message and with this movie the message is to truly listen and to truly hear the stories of your grandparents, of your parents and the adversities that they've been through in order to come to this country and give their children a better life. I think documentaries can hugely change the lives both of people in the audience and of your subjects. When I first made this movie, I premiered at the Heartland Film Festival. Jan Ping, the mother, came into the ladies' room and as a director I was super nervous, my first screening, and she came into the ladies' room and said, we've made a terrible mistake, my daughter feels horrible that she looks like a brat in the movie, I don't think we should have made it, it was a big mistake. But anyway, good luck with the screening. I was pretty um, nervous after that. What happened is, at that screening and many subsequent screenings, members of the audience have come up to the mother and daughter and said, thank you so much for sharing your story and being very real, because it helps me with my family.